starting out from before. Uh, my name is Christine Ami. I am the Navajo Cultural Arts Program Grant Manager here at Diné College. And I am here today to continue our Minor Monday sessions. And so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and do a share screen. Hopefully I don't lose your audio uh, today. All right, uh, to discuss our Navajo weaving minor. And so here at our Navajo uh, at Diné College, um, I'm going to go over the history of weaving here at the college, as well as the community needs um, from our perspective of why we need to have uh, and continue to grow our Navajo weaving programs here at the college, and then to get into the nitty gritty of what the uh, program itself from the minor perspective and the academic perspective, what that would include. So uh, without further ado, thank you guys for joining back with us. Um, let's go ahead and proceed and take a look at today's presentation. So one of the things that we take a look at is why should we have a minor here? What is a minor? Why should Diné College students consider a minor? What are the minor programs being developed here for fall 2021? And what is a Navajo weaving minor, right? What is the content specialization about? How does Navajo weaving uh, minor satisfy satisfy the need uh, of that content specialization? What are the tentative Navajo weaving minor requirements? And how can you guys provide input? Uh, this is so important as we continue to develop these programs. We want to make sure that we get as much community input as possible. So if you see anybody in your household that may be interested in this, or if you know anybody who may be interested in it, send them a message, give them a phone call, tell them to jump on, or go ahead and share our information with you. We also have little pamphlets available for individuals who don't have access to the internet. So um, just contact us and we can send those guys out as well. So without further ado, what is a minor? A minor is a secondary academic discipline in addition to your major study. Um, typically it's at, uh, 18 to 26 credits in addition to your major. Now, sometimes you can get your gen ed requirements to coincide with the minors and that is wonderful. So once you guys really start thinking about minors, make sure you hook up with your advisors and that you are you know, extremely um, aware of how and the rationale behind every single elective that you pick for your gen ed because sometimes you can put them together and it helps to uh, lessen the total amount of credits that you're taking but typically that's what a minor is something above and beyond your uh, your major discipline. So why should students um, consider minors that don't directly connect to their main discipline? They can minor in another field. So for example, if um, you are interested in any one of these other areas and you don't necessarily see a correlation between your degree program study and weaving, but you're just really interested and you want to build those skills, this may be something that you would think about. If a student wants to focus in on lo a localized concentration within their major discipline, they can minor in another field. So for example, um, we're gonna be going over weaving and its connection with four of our different schools. Um, and programs coming from those schools today. Um, and then if a student wants additional credentialing to strengthen their academic profile, they can minor in another field. I specifically am thinking about like elementary education and a weaving minor and how that could be incorporated in our, in our curriculum system, our K through 12 curriculum system. So like I said, there's multiple reasons why you may want to decide and choose a minor. Um, it's something that's not obligatory. It's something that, something that you don't have to do but it's something that may complement and overall just improve your experience as a Diné College student here. So just a quick recap, if we're taking a look at the different minor programs here at the college um, that are in its development stage, we have our Native American Studies um, that's coming out of the School of Business and Social Science. Um, that is a program that we went over on January 4th. If you're still interested in learning a little bit more, check our videos back at the Diné College uh, web Facebook page and they should be housed there so you can take a look and just listen to the presentation. Um, our last week we went over our Navajo silversmithing uh, minor and so just an FYI, and not an FYI, but a big kudos. Thank you guys for anybody who has contacted us, who has completed a survey, who has given us that community input. We truly appreciate it. And we're going to continue collecting uh, community feedback on all of these programs up until uh, February 5th. Once we February 5th hits, we're 
going to close out our community input session. Um, and so those are the things that we'll, we'll be looking at. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who's done uh, one of these survey monkeys, who's called up, who sent an email. Thank you to all the DC faculty and staff who have taken their time to meet with me. I've been hosting um, uh, small uh, faculty meetings with each one of our divisions to get feedback. So thank you. Today, we're going to talk about Navajo weeding. And I, that's something that's really near and dear to me. And I'll go through that in just a second and how Diné College really plays a role in that for my own personal uh, well-being and what I can foresee for our students and what I have seen as the grant manager here about the impact in terms of weeding. By the way, this is some dye products coming from one of our BFA majors, uh, Tammy Martin. And then next week, we're going to talk about uh, one of our, um, our Navajo cultural arts minor. And so that will be interesting for people to join in so that they can learn a little bit about the distinction between the certificate and the minor and which one may be applicable to them or interesting for them to, to join in. So as of right now, these are the four different minors that we have in development for our Diné College. So let's move on and let's focus is in on our Navajo weeding minor, right? Um, this particular minor is going to be housed in the arts, humanities, and English department. And we're gonna discuss that um, in just a second as why, because we do have weeding classes in both our School of Dinner Studies and Education and the um, School of Arts, Humanities, and English. And so we'll go through that in just one second. If we take a look at the weeding history at Diné College, very akin to the silversmithing um, program, we are, looking at a topic, a curriculum, a focus of study that has been part of our college since the inception of Navajo Community College, and so which is now today Diné College. Uh, it's one of the areas um, and one of the rationales we, in order to provide higher education, right, while still being able to maintain thresholds and understandings of our cultural our cultural knowings and our cultural being. So um, one of the things that we see here at the college is that we've uh, consistently offered Navajo Weaving 1 classes and Navajo Weaving 2 classes. Those are usually our introductory classes. And the impact that it has made on students, just those two classes and speaking from a, per, you know, a very, very personal um, uh, arena where um, I went to school on the East Coast and then I did my graduate studies over in um, California. Weaving was something that just kept me grounded. It, you know, I brought my loom wherever I went and it helped me to battle, you know, areas of homesick uh, and taking a look at perspective. It really just regrounded me back back to home. Furthermore, you know, it became a language for both myself and my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother was a Navajo speaker only. She was a primary, um, at, one, at one point, like the primary contributor in terms of being able to provide economically for her, her, her family um, through weaving. And so when we got together, it was a way to uh, create a language between the two of us until my Navajo language skills start to get a little bit better and stronger. And so, you know, those are the reconnection that, that started to take place. And Diné College played a huge role in that because when I was attending school here, I was able to take classes with Jeannie Jones and Eileen Nagel and, um, and sit and talk with these weavers. And we talked language, we talked culture, we talked gossip, we learned how to weave. And then I was able to take those stories and knowledges back home and then create another dialogue at home. You know, learning how my grandmother does weed turns differently, learning how we warp a little bit differently and why we warp a little bit differently and taking a look at all the different nuances of ultimately how it builds us up into being a Navajo individual who's a weaver. And so those were, some of the courses um, the, and the impacts that we took a, took a look at. And it wasn't just all technical. When we look at the history of weaving here at the college, it wasn't that we just focused and we don't just focus on, you know, the technical components, right? Diagonal weaves, taking a look at warps, looking at different types of spindles, um, taking a look at uh, different structures of looms uh, based off of European looms. It wasn't just taking a look at it from that technical technical stand. We were ultimately engaging with a reconnection with our Navajo identity and, and Navajo cultural well-being, um, specifically taking a look at the role of sheep, right, um, and understanding how um, those 
components, those natural components and herbs? How do they all come together, understanding all of those moving parts that take place off of the womb and off of the spindle and how that impacts us as, an, as Navajo weavers? And so that's just my takeaway. And each one of our students has their own experience and has their own connection with the classes and the instructors and their own loom. And so those are, those are the things that really, at least for me from a Navajo cultural arts grant manager, really keep me ticking and keep me going because you see those types of not just um, technical successes, but intrinsic and cultural uh, growth that takes place that, that are directly correlated with the coursework that we, we look at here at the college. So when we look at the need for Navajo centric weavers, our weavings are everywhere. When I say everywhere, they are global. I lived in Spain for a while. Uh, people always took me in to do curating of, of you know, telling stories about what, what do these mean, rugs mean. Um, you can find them everywhere. And unfortunately, the majority of these collections do not have Navajo curators and they, they don't have Navajo in-house weavers to give that, the, you know, that type of intel and information. And so what we're doing is we're creating a cultural where people are able to discuss our textiles within those arenas. Um, if furthermore, we're taking a look at these areas, um, the reconstructing, um, and, and then obviously there's an economic self-determination component to it as well. So we have um, in our revitalization arena, an emphasis on um, you know the Navajo a Navajo way of living. Not to say that all Navajos weave and all families have a weaving history, but there is for our weavers uh, under way of understanding the world and sensing the world through wool, through sheep, through understanding how the warm the war work constructs and how our loom talks to us. And so, and then we you know it gives an. Uh, a stepping stone, right? And that's how I look at these types of programs and classes is that you may not leave here, right? Um, with a minor and become a master weaver, but you definitely have a foreground and stepping stones in terms of making those types of, of revitalization movements. There's the reconnection. And for me, this is the most important, but obviously everybody has their own story. Um, you know, the reconnection with family, the reconnection with culture and language and herbs and songs and stones and just our general holistic well-being. If you pay attention to the loom, the loom will teach you. If you talk to the sheep, they'll talk back. And so growing and learning um, from that perspective allows us to reconnect with all of those different areas. We're also taking a look at remembering Native sciences, right? Um, remembering philosophy, Navajo philosophy, even Navajo government structures, art and education. Weaving has a role in all of those arenas. And so those are the things that um, we, we enjoy watching our students go through that process. We're taking a look at also, especially with the fact that this is going to be housed within the School of Arts and Humanities, a revealing and dismantling and reconstructing of the tension and relationships that exist between fine arts and the cultural arts. Um, and so for many people, they become very distinct arenas. And so through our housing and the way that we understand uh, our cultural arts and our fine arts, they become synonymous at times, but there is also discussion and uh, room for understanding, you know, the various nuances between these two realms and, and how weaving becomes, Navajo weaving in particular, becomes a kind of nexus for those dialogues to take place. And then we have our economic self-determination areas. Um, people taking a look at our minor may want to know how do I further right, my economic development? How can I provide for my family just on a, a mere like profit intake? How can I do that? I know my grandmothers have been able to do that. How can I do that? As well as learning right, our tribal economies. How can we um, learn how to weave, um, you know, rug dresses or sash belts and uh, be able to provide that type of cultural um, uh, material wealth that is also very much embedded in who we are as Navajo people. How can I engage in that economy as well? So those are our, our very real, very contemporary needs for, for maintaining um, this type of, of, of discipline. So when we look at our Navajo weaving minor as a whole, right? 
The Weaving Minor is intended to provide Diné College students with opportunities to explore Navajo weaving designs as from a historical right perspective as well as an, a contemporary innovative arena. Just taking a look and talking to all the weavers that we've had on our Tawasipe series. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, join us on our, um, our programming for that. You can find archives of that at our Navajo Cultural Arts Program.org website. But talking to those weavers, we have an understanding that our, our design and our variation and our innovation is always at the forefront. Uh, we're looking at technical pro approaches. So this is very much a project-based hands-on minor, as well as a philosophical understanding of how weaving, you know, dialogues and fits and, and sometimes clashes within the realms of the fine arts, the cultural arts, and our Navajo way of knowing. The minor is intended to be housed in the School of Arts, Humanities, and English, and it's intended for Diné College students from all BFA, uh, BA, and BSA programs to, to enjoy. Uh, we are preparing for student enrollment as early as fall 2021. So make sure that you guys, if you have feedback, put it in. Constructive feedback, you know, critical feedback, suggestions. We want it all so that we can analyze it when we pull together our advisory group again. So here's the nitty gritty. This is what people really want to focus in on. And if you heard the silent version, you had a nice visual, but now you get my commentary on top of it. Um, we have our 3D design class included as one of the core requirements because the concept of space and utilizing 3D design, um, especially as we start to talk about with the fine arts realm, is something that's very, um, very important. Not to say that our traditional ways don't have those areas, but it starts to give us vocabulary and a Abilities to create dialogue through that translation of, of our traditional heritage weavers and our uh, fine arts uh, weavers. Then we have four very technical classes, right? Technical meaning skill based skills based classes where you will need your loom, you will need your raw materials in order to continue on with the program. Our introduction to Navajo weaving really focuses on loom construction, uh, the basics of spinning, taking a look at vertical and horizontal designs, and the creation of one or two pieces throughout the semester, depending upon if you take a six week, an eight week, or a five week class. Our next uh, class is our foundations class, which builds upon the introduction level, where we're really starting to take a look at different types of edge cords, how to do different variations of spins, um, and uh, goes into our vertical design. Um, our, I'm sorry, our diagonal designs and, and explores that. You're also expected to produce a little bit more in terms of your final output. Now, these next two classes are really unique, um, and they were absolutely uh, almost demanded by our, our weavers that we brought together to design the Navajo BFA program. Um, we always knew that wool processing was going to be part of our curriculum, but as we sat down and we really listened to these weavers, wool processing and knowing how to spin, knowing how to uh, work with with wool, getting wool off the sheep onto right our carding, our paddles, and onto the spindle, and then learning how to reconnect with our herbs and get, gather herbs and learn how to naturally dye as well as use synthetic dyes. This um, is fundamental for our 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 program in particular and something that our advisory committee from the BFA program demanded upon. And so that is trickling over into our minor program where people learn how to wool process, right? hope wool process. And so um, we see that taking place in wool processing one where you learn how to get the wool off the sheep and um, how to clean the wool, card the wool, spin the wool. Our wool processing two takes a look at dyeing, the dyeing process. How do you go out to properly gather herbs? Um, how do you boil? How do you, um, what kind of chemical reactions do you need in order to make those um, pigments stick to the wool, as well as taking a look at those synthetic dyes, when are synthetic dyes used, and, and what's the difference in the variations between base, using base colors between gray sheep wool and white sheep wool and um, everything in between. Now, once students can have those uh, five classes as their core requirements. We also are proposing to have two electives and that would bring a total hour for this minor to 21 credit hours, but students could really think about, well, well, what am I in this program for? What do I want to get out of it? I always tell my students when they, when they sign up for our classes or sign up for programs, what do you want as your final goal, your final agenda? And some people are really interested in the cultural components. So taking a class like the Navajo Cultural 
social arts philosophy class, which is a general um, survey class of the various emphasis areas provides that for you. Um, and so some other people are looking more for economic development, right? How do I get a business plan? How do I, I wanna run workshops for my community. How do I set that up? How do I get funding for that? How do I make a profit? Those um, are selling practices classes, something that would be interested for them. Some people are very interested in the textile curation world and they want to understand how the Navajo textile works, addresses and dialogues with the larger right um, art history and art world, Native American art world. And so our art history class in the fine arts department is something that would be perfect for that. We also have two more technical based classes that you could think. So maybe if you're interested, you just want that hands on experience and you want to gain as much technical skill as possible, then you can continue on that technical track and learn skills in terms of Navajo sash belt and ceremonial weavings um, and our advanced Navajo weaving, which really gets into inner workings of the twill weave, as well as um, two face weave and tuft weavings. And so it, there's, there's room for growth and innovation and exploration. So those are in total, we're looking at 21 credit hours, but obviously this is what we're proposing right now. We're going to take all that feedback that people have been able to provide through the survey, through calling, um, in order to uh, reassess if this is what our community needs, if this is where the direction that we need to go. So it's really important that you guys provide us that feedback. So why would a Dine College student want to choose an, a Navajo weaving minor, right? So there's several rationales as to why um, this could come and how this could complement. If we're looking at our STEM, I just am marveled every time um, just being able to understand the world through our work um, for me has been phenomenal. I'm horrendous at math, you can ask my students, um, but when you put me on a warp and you ask me to do twill weave, everything falls into place for me. The yeah, concept of, of accounts, uh, the, the, the algebra and the equations that take place in order to understand how that pattern functions. When I'm doing even uh, just uh, pictorials, uh, geometry and that those types of areas really make sense to me once it's up on the loom. And so we start to see that dialogue in addition to right the, the very un understandings of fibers and herbs and chemical reactions that take place through the dyeing process and the gathering process and just all these native sciences that exist just from our Navajo weaving, right? Um, that's something that may be interesting for our STEM students to explore. Um, our psychology BA students may be interested in understanding, right, the holistic impacts of Navajo weaving. Um, as I said, I have a very personal connection uh, with that arena. I got very homesick during my graduate studies and having my weave, my, you know, my loom with me and being able to sit at the loom was one of the ways that I was able to ground myself um, and ultimately finish my uh, finish my 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 graduate program my my doctoral program was because I had my loom with me. Those are the things that we, we take from our psychology and maybe even our public health arena uh, that may be interesting for those students. Our um, School of Dentist Studies and Education, as I previously said, being able to combine right your Navajo weaving with your uh, education program. What could you do with our right K through 12 curriculum? The things that you could invent, the innovate, the 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 content, the lesson planning. Um, how can how can you utilize those two and bring those two together? Not to mention that right there's room and explore for exploration of study of herbs and sheep and and goats. We don't just use. Um, uh, sheep fibers, we also use other fibers, fibers, and, and just fibers in general as they relate to our traditional life ways. And then we have our um, Sahi BFA major um, students. And this one, you know, uh, it, it obviously is going to allow for students to take a look at weaving um, in dialogue with the fine arts and the cultural arts. But we have this really amazing uh, creative writing program that's starting. And with the way that I understand weaving is it's a writing format. It's one of our traditional writing formats and to have that dialogue with the creative writing formats and to see what our students are able to put together and, and, and understand through those two different languages is something that 
um, I'm, I'm really excited to see develop through, through our own Diné College programming. Um, students are interested, if they're interested in, you know, self-sufficiency in terms of economic endeavors, they want to meet you. Here's all these stories of our grandmothers and uncles and grand, and just, you know, weavers who have been able to put themselves through school or put their children through school or be able to contribute to the household um, uh, profit through weaving. And so how, how can we do that? How can we do that in the 21st century and, um, and be able to sustain ourselves? It's, uh, some, it's a skill and that's something that we'll be addressing through this minor. And then finally, and once again, this is the most significant to me, but obviously everybody has their own particular um, uh, you know, priority is that it is allowing Diné College students to reconnect with their family histories and understand that within the larger scope of Navajo cultural lived experiences. So those are the things um, um, to why, you know, a student would, would want to consider it, just some ideas that we have been um, putting together. So once again, thank you guys for listening to me. For some of you guys, twice now, one with no audio and this time with audio. My husband is telling me, don't get mad, Christine. This is your fault. You need to learn how to use technology better. And he is correct. Um, but uh, you can contact us through a survey, uh, also through email. If you wanted some paper surveys, we can provide that. Just send us an email so that we can get this out to you. And then also a phone. Don't call today. Call tomorrow. Crystal's out butchering, so she's not attending her phone right now. Um, and that's what we have in terms of of our Navajo weaving minor. Uh, next week, we will be back and we will be uh, working and discussing our Navajo cultural arts uh, minor. And so I encourage you guys to jump in and take a look at that. That minor is more of a survey minor for our cultural arts. So you don't have to specifically emphasize in just right the technical skills like um, weaving and silversmithing, you, you can do more of a general survey study. And so uh, I encourage you guys to join us next Monday. I'll make sure I have my technology functioning so you don't have to listen to me twice. Um, but I hope that you guys are having a wonderful holiday today if you guys are on holiday. Um, and for our Denai College students, I hope that your first week of class went really well. And we have 15 more weeks. So buckle down, study hard, and make sure that you guys are uh, providing our community feedback. So uh, hit the survey. Uh, the link is provided in our description for this live video. You guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later.